Everybody, I'm Marcus. I'm Ryan. And together, we are the, the Northwest, Northwest Sports Fanatics. Fanatics. Now, week nine is officially in the books in the college and the NFL season. Uh, we, You know the routine. We want to go over some of our standout players, also give you our top five uh, in the NFL, and uh, also a new thing this week, top five NBA. You know, NBA has just started up, so we're going to go over our top five teams in the NBA. And also, we want to touch on the, the recent BCS standings. Um, so I'll start it off with my couple of standout players on the offensive side of the ball. First off, uh, it hurts me to say this, but I, I got to go Nick Foles. Right. Wow. I, I seen something that said he bumped his head and, and woke up uh, with his concussion and thought he was Peyton Manning. Must have been that deer antler spray or <laughs> yeah, something. That's the spray they got going on out there. 406 yards, seven touchdowns. Again, he tied the NFL record. So shouts out to Nick Foles for that awesome game that you had. Uh, next up, uh, quarterback, I want to go with Tom Brady. Is he back? I think so. He's he's back. You know, he he got Gronk back, uh, his big play tight end, and they're, they're getting the, the chemistry back together again. Right. 432 yards, four TDs. Now, you know, uh, his, for five weeks, he had four TDs total. Yeah. And in one game, he threw for four TDs. Right. Tom uh, Brady. To, it's Tom Brady. So I think that is as, as a, a, a sign of things to come there. Now, at the running back position, I want to go with Chris Johnson. Oh, I'm sorry. CJ 2K. Mm. Now, when you have a, a 23 Curry, 150 yard game, two touchdowns, then you get the CJ 2K moniker back added on to you there. Right. So, you nice game there, CJ 2K. Uh, you've been kind of a disappointment, but keep it up, man. You know, I, I'm rooting for you. I like you, CJ 2K. Right. 2,000 yards may not be available this season, but right. maybe if you keep working hard next season, maybe we can see right. that. Right, man, just, just keep it up. Keep grinding out there in Tennessee, and uh, I see you out there, Mr. CJ 2K. Uh, next up, I want to go to uh, a lot of running backs. They had some great games, but I like to give shout-outs to ones who had great games and a team win. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go Chris Avery. Um, 18 Curries, 139 yards, one touchdown in the upset win over the Saints. Right. Uh, he had a huge game because Geno Smith only completed eight completions. So you, you had a huge game. So I'm going to uh, give you your shout out there, Chris Ivey. That's actually his second time I done shouted him yeah, up. Yeah, he this might year. be one of the more underrated running backs in the NFL as we move forward. Yeah, he was kind of buried in the depth chart over there in New Orleans right. uh, behind uh, Sproles. Sproles and. Uh, Ingram and yeah. Pierre Thomas, but it, you got new life out there in New York. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to Mike James, right from the Buccaneers. Played pretty good he, from the U. You know he he had a great game. Uh, Twenty eight carries, one hundred and fifty eight yards. They almost uh, pulled the upset. Um, and also Eddie Lacy, he's kind of found his groove now. Right from uh, Bama. To, yeah, from Bama. You know how Bama players roll. Uh, Twenty two for one fifty and one touchdown. Now I want to move on to my wide receivers here. Um, I, I want to start off with Andre Johnson. You know, they lost, but right. nine receptions, 229 yards, three touchdowns. I think he's like Larry Fitzgerald. People think they're old and they're going to fall off or mm -hmm. they have fallen off. But really with them, they're really not. And you, he keeps giving us games like this. Right. So shout out to Mr. Andre Johnson, you know, uh, Casey Keenum, the new quarterback out there. Right. And we'll see where that goes. Uh, next up, uh, I want to go with, uh, you can't throw for seven touchdowns and not have a, a shout out. Right. So I got to go Riley Cooper. Um, you know, I uh, hope I don't get in trouble for doing that. Riley, right. you know, lucky it's not Vic. He wouldn't pass you the ball. But uh, five, rece <laughs> five receptions, 139 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, shout out to Riley Cooper. And also D-Jack, Deshaun Jackson. Five uh, receptions, 150 yards, and one of the touchdowns. And uh, my last shout-out for the wideouts, I'm going to go with uh, Pierre Garçon. He's been crying all week in the papers about how the Redskins passing game suck and we can't pass. And you, 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 seven receptions, 172 yards. So do that next week, man. Keep it consistent with it. Hopefully, RG3 getting back in the groove of things. Right. All right. And uh, what about on the defense side of the ball? Any standouts that, that look special for you? Yeah, three defensive standouts I just want to mention real quick. First, I want to go with defensive end from Boise State, Shea McClellan. Okay. All right. So he had three tackles, three sacks. You know, it helped the Bears win 27-20. to But he did one thing that I don't like. He gets somebody injured uh, in the game, Mr. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers. Now, Aaron Rodgers is out based on the sack that he had out probably three to four weeks. And that might hinder Green Bay's chances of making the oh, playoffs. Yeah. So I don't like to see anyone get hurt, but Shea McClellan, that was probably your career game mm -hmm. that you had. Just unfortunately, you had to hurt one of the all-star 
you know, players in the NFL. Maybe the and, best player in the You know, Mr. Right. Discount, double check, double check. Double you know, check. so, you know, he's playing good. So we'll have to see how that pans out for Green Bay, but shout out to you, Shane McClellan. Next, I got to go to defensive end Cameron Wake. Okay. Now, this guy's one of the most underrated defensive ends in the league. Five tackles, three sacks, one forced fumble. But the key plays that he makes in games help them win. 22-20, mm -hmm. to 20, in overtime, he had the safety on Andy mm -hmm. Dalton. So you got to shout out Cameron Wake. You're playing well. You already know he's going to go to the Pro Bowl. Oh, yeah. So that's already a done deal. That's a wrap for him. And last but not least, I want to go with Mr. Bones Jones' brother, <laughs> Mr. Chandler Jones from, obviously, the New England New Patriots, England, yeah, right? You know, he's pretty solid. You know, three tackles, two sacks. Patriots uh, kind of got in into gear, fifty-five yeah. to thirty-one against the Steelers. Nice. I don't really, I didn't really think they'd blow them out. You know, they haven't really been playing great, but Dobson mm -hmm. and some of their players, Gronk, they're starting to get in the groove. So, mm -hmm. shout out to Chandler Jones, you're playing well. Um, those are my top three, obviously for this week, and I want to shift over to the BCS really quick. Okay, we're gonna go over the top ten really how fast. Some BCS rankings. Look. So BCS is looking pretty, pretty. Hold, hold on, AKA the bullcrap standings. Okay, okay, just for now, we'll go through it. But number one, we got Alabama. You know they're rolling, mm -hmm. roll tide. Roll obviously, you know Nick Saban. The only rumor in the in the news right now is that Saban, if he would leave, mm -hmm. he would take the Texas job. Oh, Longhorn. The, no USC, but maybe Texas. So Alabama fans, you might be a little worried if something doesn't, hook you know, hook maybe, horns. maybe happen right away. <laughs> Number two, we got Florida State, famous Jameis. Okay. All right, they deserve to be there. They yeah, beat after the big win against yeah, Miami. Yeah, right. You beat Miami forty-one to fourteen. So you know, uh, good for you. You really deserve it. You guys have been playing great. You're at number two in the BCS. Number three, we got Oregon, you know, oh. our Ducks, who we play tomorrow. You know, we had a bye week. We're ready for Stanford and those uh, Cardinal, those trees. Mm -hmm. We're ready to take them down. One little key stat I want to throw out there for you. Heisman, 20, 20 touchdowns, zero interceptions, Marcus Mariota. There's no one that's been playing at this level with this many touchdown passes mm -hmm. this deep in the season that has no picks. You know, so uh, something to look out for as we move forward. Number four, Ohio State, Urban Meyer. The most overrated team probably in the BCS. Yeah, I don't think so. You know, Braxton Miller has 15 touchdowns, three picks. Mm -hmm. But you have a soft schedule. You will play Michigan in a few weeks at the end of the month. I think it's the 30th of November. So look out for that game, and we'll see if Ohio State is for real or not. So not really sure, but uh, kind of. Well, yeah, we'll see. And then Michigan is kind of down this year, too. So yeah. I'm not really sold on it. The they, they got beat up by Michigan State yeah. last week, so we'll have to see. Number five, Stanford. You got David Shaw, my favorite coach. Okay. That's not in the NFL right now. You got uh, Kevin Hogan. He's a little overrated, underrated. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes he plays good, sometimes not. 13 touchdowns, 5 picks. So if he makes key mistakes, yeah. that might be the difference between Oregon coming out with that victory tomorrow. Um, number 6 is one of my favorite teams in the top 10, Baylor. Oh, So the, ba the Baylor Bears, you know, they have a, a reputation of good players that have gone into the NFL, like RG3. Um, obviously, like Terrence Williams Terrence on the Williams, Cowboys, but now you got Hunter. Bryce Perry, 18 mm -hmm. TDs, one pick. Ooh. So he's falling right in line with RG3. Yeah. Last he strunk, went to Oregon, transferred out. He's got 11 TDs, oh, and he's yeah. on the cusp of 1,000. So he's right there. He's looking pretty good. Top three, obviously running back, back. Yep. you know, mm -hmm. going into the NFL. I like mm -hmm. Lash a lot. Uh, number seven, I got to go Clemson, Taj Boyd. Sammy Watkins might be the best duo right now playing in the top ten. They hanging in there. Playing pretty well. Yeah. You know, obviously the only other duo I like better is Johnny Football and obviously his star Mike wide receiver Evans. there. Yeah, Mike Evans. So, sure. But uh, they're playing well, and uh, Dabo Sweeney's a great coach. Oh, yeah. No matter what you say about Clemson, they might be overrated. They get beat up in the big games, but he's solid. I like him. Number eight, Missouri. For your okay. boy Jimmy Whitaker okay. out there, for you, so, so right there, you know EJ Gaines, you know he's a senior corner. He's got four interceptions, Ooh. so he's playing well, and that's a big reason why Mizzou is still in the top ten. I mm -hmm. thought they maybe bounce out, but they're still there, looking pretty strong. Number nine, you got Auburn. Who oh, thought so after uh, oh, Cam? Oh. Run that by me again. Number nine, Auburn. Oh, right, no Cam Newton. Wow, right, you know, no Nick Fairley, but somehow, some way. They have this guy named Trey Mason. He's running back. 13 mm -hmm. touchdowns. Ooh. He's looking pretty nice. good. But the, ne the next key stat for people, though, for Auburn, all you bandwagoners, if you're hopping on Auburn, you got Tennessee, mm -hmm. you got Georgia, okay. and you got Bama the next oh. three weeks. So we'll see how good you really are. Yes. I think they can win maybe two out of those three. But if they win three out of those three, then you know they are legit and they're the real deal. And then number 10, I got Oklahoma. Bob right. Stoops. Way you to know. make it back, Mr. Stoops. Right? It's about time you got back in the yeah. top ten. It's like Nebraska. We yeah. need you back in the top ten for it. And Miami's mm -hmm. and the Floridas, you know. But Blake Bell, he's their quarterback leader. He's looking pretty solid. Look for him to keep moving forward. And uh, if, like I said, they got a big game against Baylor tomorrow. So oh. we'll see how uh, how that goes. Uh, what about the, uh, the NFL? All right. So our NFL uh, top five teams, you know, our annual power rankings here. Uh, first off, I'm going to start with the Kansas City Chiefs, of course. 
Uh, they're nine and zero. Now the defense is good, but at some time you got to score some points. Right. And that's what I'm kind of suspect on is their offense. Uh, but the defense is top notch. We're talking like top defense I've seen yeah, in probably the last like three or four top years. Notch. You're not gonna get no better than that. Tomba Ali, right. Houston. Um, Dirk Johnson. Yeah. You got the corner, Sean Smith. McCluster. And you got McCluster. Ridiculous. Eric Burry at safety. So you got a, a lot of talent on there. Uh, and a huge turnaround for, for Andy Reid, what yeah. he done to that Chiefs. Yeah, and don't even be surprised if they play Denver and win. It yeah. wouldn't surprise, especially the one at Kansas City at home. They'll win that one. But I think on the road, that might be the one they may lose just because it's in Denver. But if they if they sweep them, don't be surprised. This D is legit. Yeah, the, the defense is definitely legit. And uh, ask the Philadelphia Eagles about that D. All right, so next up, we're going to go uh, Denver Broncos. Uh, who would have thought that two AFC West teams would be the best teams in the NFL? No way you would have predicted that when the season started. No, no way. way. Well, they, they're 7-1 and one right now. Um, prayers out to Mr. John Fox. You know, he had the heart surgery. Yeah, get better. Um, so, you know, your team is going to go out there and play hard for you with a whole lot of emotion. Um, Peyton Manning is, is still the leading MVP candidate right now. And um, they're looking to uh, – I'm looking for Von Miller. He's, he's starting to pick it up and getting the groove with things. Yeah. So we'll see. They're the, my number two team. Uh, number three, I'm going to go with the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Um, they're 8-1. and one. Um, They do have some kinks in the armor, though. Right. So they, they do have a little issues. Uh, home field advantage is going to be huge with them as far as uh, wanting them to, to make it to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I think it, for them to make the Super Bowl, it is a must that they have home field. If they don't get home field, there's no way they're making the Super Bowl. It's just there's too much competition in the NFC right now. Mm -hmm. But if they do get it, I mean, pretty much pack your bags, you're, you're going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, uh, Rice out for the year, ACL. Percy Harvin should be coming back soon uh, for the Seahawks. Uh, number four, I'm going to go out to San Fran. Shout out to uh, my homeboy Richard Gatewood out there. Richard Gatewood. heard from you in the wild, man. Mr. Gatewood. Yes, sir. Uh, they six and two, and uh, the scary thing about them is that they're getting uh, some offensive weapons back. Uh, Michael Crabtree will be back, and also Mario Manningham, and maybe Alden Smith. He's already activated, so right. And when we had a couple losses early in the season, people started to worry Everybody a little bit. On but I told him, you know, as long as you just keep the ball, you know, moving, rolling, you're gonna get there. And now look, what are they six and two? Yeah, they they so, in that rock with Frank Gore out there and uh, Kaepernick to take a little pressure off Kaepernick, so he won't have to do as much. Right. So number four team, the San Francisco 49ers, and my last team, number five, we're gonna go with the New England Patriots. Uh, they're seven and two right now. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Tom Brady he had four TDs in his last five games, and the last game he went out and threw four. Right, and I think I don't think anyone else besides Aaron Rodgers or maybe Drew Brees mm -hmm. could bring players that aren't very good mm -hmm. and make them average or above average. Oh, it's yeah. it's amazing how good that he makes everyone else, and he's almost forty. I mean, that's, he's still that's, playing that's great. That's the magic you have when you're Tom Brady, man. When you when you got three championship rings, a lot of players fall in line and they and they right. they want to follow your lead. Right. It makes you wonder if they would have won all five, what the legacy would be. People wouldn't be talking about the Steelers, Green Bay Packers, mm -hmm. Dallas Cowboys. It would be maybe that yeah, organization. It's so it's crazy to think. So shout out to Bill Belichick and Tom Brady out there in the Patriots. You're all definitely doing your thing. And, um, you know, NBA has started up. Right, NBA. Yeah, first week. First week of NBA. So, who are some of your top five teams in the NBA so far so after the first week? right now we're going to go over Northwest Sports Fanatics top five. This is not going to be an ESPN or mm -hmm. Fox Sports. This is us personally out, based yeah. on the games that we watch. Mm -hmm. So, number one, we got to go Indiana Pacers. Of course. All right, they're 4-0. Oh. You got Paul George, 27 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists. This guy is the next... Dwayne Wade, the next Kobe Bryant. I mean, we're talking about legit superstar. His jersey is going to be sold overseas. Mm -hmm. This guy is going to blow up. I mean, he already had a good year last year, but I think in these next two years, you're really going to realize it's almost like a baby T Mac. How good, he is. How good oh, really this player is. I it's mean, a great comparison. Right, right there. this guy is really special, almost like a Brandon Roy. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it hurts me to say, but possibly better. Yeah, I mean, Roy. if he doesn't get injured, I mean, this guy's great. Um, number two, we got to go Houston Rockets, 4-1. Mm -hmm. and one. These guys are playing great. James Harden, Dwight Howard, 
you know, would they mesh? Would they not mesh? They're meshing. Yeah, they all right, they're they're well. dominating. They're playing great. Jeremy Lin. No, that's you got, what I was about to say. Don't right. forget about Lin Sanity. Yeah, Lin Sanity. Kevin Jordan McHale Jordan. is coaching everyone up, so you're playing great as well. Number three, Golden State Warriors, three okay. and one. Okay, Splash right? Brothers. Splash Brothers. Stephen Curry's launching nine threes a game. That's more than even last Ooh. year. And even if he makes four or five, that's more than most you know guards can make even in a couple games, yeah. right? So you got obviously Clay Thompson, Andre Iguodala, David Lee, mm-hmm. Andrew Bogut. Mark Jackson, top three coach in the NBA. For sure. Right? So, moving on up, Golden State. You know, they've been they've been on the low for a while. The Billy Owens era is gone. Now we're in the new era, the Mark Jackson era. So, good to see. Number four, we're going to go with a surprise team, Minnesota Timberwolves. K-Love. Now, K-Love, right? Minnesota Timberwolves, three and one. You know, you got Rubio healthy. You got Kevin Love healthy here from the yes. Northwest. Yes. You got Kevin Martin you got Corey Brewer on the wing. You're playing well. And you know what? They're playing so well right now. They could win 45 to 51 games, okay. I think, this year. That's why we have them in the top five, because no one thought they'd be 3-1 right doable, now. That's doable, but they have to stay healthy. Rubio is key, and also right. Kevin Love. Absolutely. Kevin Love with all those 20 rebound games, 20 point games. Yeah. We love to see those. And then number five, the surprise team, Philadelphia 76ers. Ooh. You played you played well in this first week and a half. You're 3-1. and one. Most teams and most players and most fans probably thought 0-4 or maybe 2-2 mm-hmm. two two at the very best. 3-1, and one, you got Michael Carter-Williams, 20 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds, 3 steals a game in his first week on the average. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He, he's he's a better player than I gave him credit for. And also with that team, you have to look at the three teams they beat. They beat the Wizards. They beat uh, Chicago. Right. And they also beat the Miami Heat. Yeah, so uh, respect. Yes. You know what I mean? We don't know how good you're going to make it You know, as the season goes on, but respect for the first two weeks. Um, Michael Carter Williams might be rookie of the year if Oladipo and some of these Anthony mm-hmm. Bennett's don't pan out. Mm-hmm. Don't be surprised if this player kind of steals it, you know, All kind right. of from everyone at this point. Um, really quickly, we want to go to the games to watch. Since we are running out of time, we want to go up for college football here real quick. Tomorrow, Thursday, we got two really big games. First one I'm going to talk about is not going to be the Oregon Ducks. It's going to be Oklahoma Sooners at 10 versus number 6 Baylor Bears. Mm -hmm. If you love college football, it's on at 430 Fox Sports 1. Tune in. Great teams, great coaches, great players. Watch this game. This is going to shake up the BCS just like with our next game. Number 3, Oregon Ducks. Oh, out here. Versus number 5, Stanford Cardinal. 6 p.m. ESPN National TV. Watch it. It's going to be one of the best games, if not the best Pac-12 game of the year. year, And this is going to shake up the BCS as well, these two games. And then Saturday, arguably the best game on the weekend, number 13 LSU versus number 1 Alabama Crimson Tide. Mm. So Catania and everyone else that roots for Alabama, watch this game. This is really going to shake up the BCF if Alabama loses, especially with what happens in the first two games. So obviously stay tuned with those. What about the NFL? Any good games you watch? In the NFL this weekend, um, I'm going to start off with the Carolina Panthers versus the San Francisco 49ers. Okay. Uh, The resurgent Carolina Panthers behind Mr. Cam. Right. Superman. Mr. Cam Newton. And um, he's going against Colin Kaepernick, so that's a good QB matchup. Might be passing in the torch watching Cam take that next step from crybaby to to actual Pro Bowl Super. Star. Yes, uh, and team leader. Team leader, That's, absolutely. That'll be great for him. Also, both defenses are good, so uh, that should be a real exciting game. Uh, next up, I want to go to Dallas Cowboys against the New Orleans Saints. Oh, that's a good game. Uh, that should be real interesting. You know, um, Rob Ryan going against his former team. Right. Something to prove. So that's a little storyline for you there. And, um, you know, it's getting close to Tony Romo time. So how is he going to hold up against the Saints? The Saints need to bounce back with uh, from the loss last week. Right. And in the Dome, they're almost impossible to beat. So Yeah. So that's a good game for you, Saints versus the Cowboys. Uh, my last game in the black and blue division, Uh-oh. Detroit Lions versus the Chicago Bears. Yeah, now, meet each other up. Uh, exactly. Now, with uh, Aaron Rodgers out, so these two teams are possibly going to be jockeying for that uh, that NFC North uh, division crown there. or a wild card or or a wild card. So that'll be a huge game uh, for you guys to, to to look forward to this weekend. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, Marcus Hill underscore NWSF. And Orion underscore NWSF. Hit us up on Facebook.com backslash NW Sports Fanatics. We want to shout out all our sponsors. We appreciate all the love and support. Share the page. We appreciate it. All right. Thanks for the love and support. Hit us up on Instagram at NW Sports Fanatics. Um, I'm Marcus. This is Orion. And together we are Northwest Sports Fanatics.